In this tutorial we learn how to calculate chronostratigraphy in OpenDetect SIS. Chronostratigraphic horizons in SIS are geologic timelines that are tracked or modeled every few milliseconds inside a framework bounded by conventionally mapped horizons. Sequence interpretation in SIS depends to a large extent on the quality of the chronostratigraphy. In this tutorial we will therefore also look at ways to improve the chronostratigraphy. First, we must map at least two horizons to define the upper and lower boundary of the target interval. Horizons should be continuous over the entire area and they cannot cross. Tools are available under the SIS Utilities menu to prepare the input horizons. SIS supports two basic modes for calculating chronostratigraphy, model driven and data driven. In model driven mode, chronostratigraphic horizons are inserted between mapped top and base horizons. This can be done by interpolating the thickness between the mapped horizons. This option is also known as straight or slicing or proportional slicing. Parallel to upper option can be used in intervals with onlapping strata, while parallel to lower emulates unconformities. In the data driven mode the algorithm follows the seismic events everywhere. This mode requires a steering cube with local dip azimuth information that was generated with OpenDetect's dip steering plugin. The dip steering plugin supports different algorithms to compute the steering cube. There are three algorithms based on Fourier transforms. The BG fast algorithm calculates the gradient of the seismic phase. And event steering is a new algorithm released in version 3.2. This algorithm computes the dip and azimuth from tracked seismic maxima, minima and steering crossings. For chronostratigraphy, the recommended order is event steering followed by FFT, standard and BG fast. A chronostratigraphy that consists of many small unconnected chronostratigraphic horizons can be improved by recalculating the steering cube with increased step out parameters. Alternatively, you can smooth the existing steering cube with a median filter. If the steering cube is too smooth, the chronostratigraphic horizons are no longer following the seismic events in detail. In this case, recalculate the steering cube with a reduced step out parameter or reduce the filter settings of the median filter. This is what a good chronostratigraphy should look like. We see continuous chronostratigraphic horizons and terminations that match the seismic events. Another way to improve the chronostratigraphy is by adding additional horizons. In this example we have flattened the seismic data with a chronostratigraphy that was calculated with only a top and a base horizon. This flattening is called a Wheeler transform. The vertical axis in this display is relative geologic time. The display shows the extent of each geologic layer and how the depositional center shifted over geologic time. Where there are gaps, we are dealing with non-deposition or erosion. And this is the result of a Wheeler transform using a chronostratigraphy that is based on six horizons. Note the much sharper definition of the progradational and retrogradational trends. Let's toggle this a few times. The data-driven algorithm does not perform very well in noisy zones. Since the algorithm tries to follow the dip and azimuth everywhere, the chronostratigraphy in this zone will comprise many small chronostratigraphic horizons that are not a good representation of the true depositional history. The two manually picked horizons in this display mark a geologic time interval near the top of the noisy zone. It is clear that the autotrack chronostratigraphy is not correct in this interval. To improve this result we insert two new horizons, one at the top of the noisy zone and one at the base. Above and below the noisy zone we will calculate chronostratigraphy in the data driven mode. In the noisy interval we use the model driven interpolation mode. Now our chronostratigraphy is good over the entire interval. Finally, to improve the chronostratigraphy we can also filter the seismic data itself. In this section we see prograding events that are not picked up by the chronostratigraphy. To improve the result we apply spectral bluing followed by dip steered median filtering. Spectral brewing increases the vertical resolution of the seismic data and dip steered median filtering removes random noise and enhances laterally continuous events. If we now recalculate the Groner stratigraphy on the filtered seismic data, we see that the Groner stratigraphy indeed follows the prograding events as it should. So Groner stratigraphy can be improved in different ways. First you can test different steering algorithms and their parameters or you can filter the steering cube itself. Secondly, you can remove noise and increase the vertical resolution by filtering the seismic data. Thirdly, you can add more horizons to constrain the solution. And finally, you can use the model driven mode in noisy zones. This concludes this tutorial on chronostratigraphy.